On this channel, we've already broken down some of the best RPGs of all time in various different categories, from the best action RPGs to the best turn-based RPGs and other variations of that. But in this video, we're going to be counting down the top 25 as of the 2023 update best Japanese RPGs, JRPGs for you guys. And I wanted to do this because I've had a few different revelations with my list in the order that it's in, and also to make a uniform list that focuses on my favorite style of RPG. But before we get into any of that, what's good everyone, OJ here, welcome back to another video. Please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you are someone new, and click that notification bell to get my videos first. Now let's go ahead and jump right into number 25 and that is Octopath Traveler and there was a number of games that were at the bottom of the list for me games like Bravely Default 2 for example but Octopath Traveler just squeaked in it has a phenomenal art style obviously the HD 2D that was the beginning of the renaissance for that and trust me there are more HD 2D games on this list but what I love about Octopath Traveler and I think Probably its best thing is the combat system, the modified Bravely Default, Brave and Default system, but simplified just a bit. You pair that with some incredible writing, fantastic music, great visuals, and you've got yourself a bona fide Japanese RPG, taking a little bit of a strange route, having eight different protagonists, all with their own stories that are pretty disconnected, but you all meet up for certain things. A little bit weird, and that's one of the reasons why it's number 25 on the list and not higher up, but maybe that gets remedied if you keep watching the video here. Next up at number 24, Atelier Ryza 3. This is a game that has evolved each time that we've seen it, from the first game that had had a great style and substance for a double A RPG all the way to two and three. But out of the three games, for sure, Atelier Ryza 3 is the most impressive and the best one. I think that it has some of the best writing in the whole Atelier series. In the whole Atelier series, it's by far my favorite main character out of any of the Atelier games. I think the combat is so well refined and done. The graphics look good. A few hiccups here and there on the Nintendo Switch, but still very impressive for the open-ended areas. They added in a bunch of cool features like being able to ride different types of animals and explore different biomes the way that you want to. But the biggest thing is the keys and how that factors into the combat with the different keys that you have. You essentially can do super moves and have so much more power added to your character, different abilities. I loved what they did here and how they intertwined the combat combat system and just evolved it from what we saw from the first and second game. You still have all the cool alchemy stuff that you can do as well that can help you with your items and help you with certain characters in terms of powering up. It's a really well done system and it's bittersweet to see the end apparently of Atelier Ryza, but at the same time, we got a phenomenal RPG that really evolved a lot from the first game all the way to this one. So Atelier Ryza 3 for everything that I talked about here, ooh, and the music, cannot forget the music, that's also good, is number 24 on the list. Number 23, Neo, The World Ends With You, and I think that everybody forgot about this game, including Square Enix. It was a long time coming, decade plus, almost 15 years in between the first game in the series that came out in the mid-ish to late 2000s, all the way to this game, but yeah, nobody really talked about it much. Square Enix didn't advertise it much. There was the anime and stuff, but it just wasn't enough. But don't let that deter you. Neo, The World Ends With You is a phenomenal action RPG that doesn't quite play like the original because of the two screens and of the puck going back and forth. They've turned it into a full-on action RPG, but it still carries the same essence and flair and style, music, different things that really tie it back 
to what the original The World Ends With You does. I love that the pins and the bat system has been overhauled and modified. I think that it's a lot of fun to have three separate characters that you can switch between, do combos, tag team abilities and everything. I think that the story and the plot is so intense. It seems so kind of fun loving and heartwarming on the outside but when you get to the nitty gritty of this game and the story it is dastardly man there are some crazy things going on so that's what i love about neo the world ends with you i think that it really combines so much of the stuff that made the original game great but then adds in a lot of new layers so it's not like you're playing the same experience again they've evolved and also cut out some of the fat some of the annoying things they've made it to where you can play the game on a standard controller so years from now or decades from now when people want to play it won't be awkward playing like with the stylus and things like that or on a smartphone so i do feel that this game up so many things from the original and it was just unfortunate because square enix didn't want to talk about it that much and neither did the rpg fans out there but it's still an incredible game i think that it's absolutely worth playing and that's why it's number 23 on my list the legend of heroes trails of cold steel 3 this is a really good series that honestly I would love to put more games on here. I just personally haven't had as much time to play through every single one and to enjoy every single one, but the ones that I have played are phenomenal. But The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 3 left one of the biggest impacts because they took everything that they learned from the Trails of Cold Steel saga and applied it to this one. There is a catch-up reminder for those who haven't played the original games. You can read up on what happens. Obviously, you want to play the ones beforehand but it's good that they included that i think the combat is incredibly well done i love the combat system there's so much depth and flexibility it can be somewhat overwhelming at times but once you kind of master exactly how this system works you combine that with the flashy looking graphics the really good writing great story progression good pacing as well especially for a long rpg legend of heroes trails of cold steel 3 becomes one of the best rpgs that i've played there's a few things that kind of bog it down here and there compared to other rpgs that i like but overall this game is incredible so if you have not tried it out great combat great music great pacing great characters it is a phenomenal style rpg and one if you truly invest into the story and everything and the greater surrounding stories with the games you will be rewarded heavily for all that time that you spent number 21 monster hunter stories 2 wings of ruin if you've ever wanted pokemon to do a little bit better when it comes to it this is your opportunity to support a game that does that monster hunter stories 2 wings of ruin is that alternative now there are a lot of things that it's missing compared to a big pokemon game but i think that they're on the right track this is the second game in the franchise you've got beautiful visuals on the modified re engine for the nintendo switch you've got a fantastic combat system i think that the combat system with the different monsters that you can hatch and the birthing system and the skills and the abilities all work really well you've got co-op built into the game you've also got competitive multiplayer built into the game so the nucleus or the base for what you want to do to have a great competent pokemon style game is all there and they nailed it the story is great as well the cinematics are fantastic and very well done and i think that this series has so much potential to get even better as Nintendo evolves that hardware with the next gen Nintendo Switch that's coming at some point, I think that we could see an incredible Monster Hunter Stories 3. But this base game, whether you're playing it on PC or you're playing on the Nintendo Switch, is a great experience and there is a lot of depth. It has a good story, it's got fun characters, and things are quite intriguing as you get further in it's incredibly well done for probably what they were working with budget wise so monster hunter stories 2 wings of ruin absolutely one of the top 25 best nintendo switch jrpgs coming in at number 20 valkyria chronicles 4 now valkyria chronicles 4 is a game that's often forgotten as well came out back in 2018 it's the fourth game in the series 
although Switch fans weren't able to play the second and third game. So I think that hurt it. Sega never localized those games. So that absolutely hurt it, and especially not having it on the platform. However, for those who still stuck through, maybe even if you played the other games some way, you know, there's ways to get it done. If you played the other games, and of course, if you played the original, Valkyria Chronicles 4 is incredible. It's got that awesome pastel painting style of graphics it's got the phenomenal mechanics and rpg systems and i will say this and which we'll talk about in just a little bit with another game the mechanics of having a strategy rpg wartime having active battle to where you can actually move and then enemies are shooting at you so it's kind of like real time a little bit but it's still turn based as you pick your turn you have your little meter that runs out it layers on top so many cool mechanics that it creates something that still most developers don't do we don't have a lot of developers making a game like this you have an emotional gripping story you have great music as well really good replay value good content packed into there a lot of stuff that you can do great power leveling options really good secrets and abilities and different stuff and different characters that you can recruit even from the first game as well so to me valkyria chronicles 4 is just an underrated really innovative strategy rpg and easily one of the best jrpgs on the system it's just unfortunate sega hasn't brought over the second and third game to complete the whole series to get people more excited about valkyria chronicles 4 or maybe they should have named it something else either way it's still in my top 25. Number 19, The Legend of Heroes Trails from Zero. And honestly, just like many games that we're gonna talk about on this list, this could have been higher up. It really could have been. The Legend of Heroes Trails from Zero is a phenomenal remaster port, bringing it to the Nintendo Switch. Everything that they did to modify the game, the quality of life improvements, I think that was great but also just the game itself. The combat system is very well done. I was kind of perplexed at first going through this combat system, but just like The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel, once you come to grips with exactly how the system works and the abilities and what you can do and the leveling and the writing, everything flows and you build a rhythm while playing this game. My only thing is I wish I had time to play so many more of the Trails series because every time that I've dedicated that time, it's become one of my favorite RPGs. There's just so many of them and they take long, but overall, I love what this game did. I liked it more than probably any other Trails game. And I think that many people feel this is one of the best, if not the best in the series, but I just loved how it started. I love the characters. I like the dialogue options. I like the quality of life stuff. I like how there's so many different things that you can do in order to ambush your enemies or in order to defend when it comes down to things and positioning yourself on the map. It really plays like a really cool hybrid of one of your favorite strategy RPGs at times, but then also a turn-based RPG as well. So love it so much. It's incredibly good. The story is phenomenal and gets better and better as you progress. So I had to get it to number 19 on my list. Swinging back over to the Sega franchises, Valkyria Chronicles, the original, and Valkyria Chronicles 4 probably overall is a better game when you start factoring in all of the adjustments and things done. But Valkyria Chronicles, the original, had one of the GOAT protagonists had the GOAT protagonist, had the GOAT enemies, had the GOAT style to it, and the simplicity of how things work with the story and the linearity of it actually kind of aids to it. It's one of those things to where sometimes if there's so many things in a game, it can kind of overwhelm, but I think that Valkyria Chronicles has just enough for all the different mechanics that we talked about that they layer on. You've got a strategy RPG, you've got different classes, you've got different abilities. There's a lot of things even in in this original game and I think it strikes the perfect balance of that depth in addition to new skills and classes but doesn't go too far overboard and keeps the maps and levels really grounded and intact to where they're challenging but at the same time fair and fun and I think it doesn't get too crazy with it like sometimes with some of the other Valkyria Chronicles games so that's why to me the original is still my favorite 
out of all the games and i had to get it at least within the top 20 but honestly you start combining everything that this game does it easily could have been higher this is the closest we've ever had to having another skies of arcadia game because yes vice i they're in the game so that right there already bumps it up sorry i had to talk about that because it's such a cool bonus and it makes me really want a skies of arcadia in modern age but hey we'll give it some extra bonus points here for that and it's number 18 on the list next up at number 17 chained echoes an indie darling mega indie hit made by essentially one person and what chained echoes really does well it reminds me of a lower budget and i just mean that in terms of obviously it didn't have what xeno gears had but it kind of reminds me of xeno gears and i think they were kind of going for xeno gears a bit when it comes to the out of mech combat with the mech combat how it plays into the story how it plays into things i think that they played a lot of the square enix rpgs because there's a lot of similarities there this game is incredibly well done the combat system is unique and innovative the graphics are fantastic i love what they've done here and i think that the writing is probably one of the best things about this game it's written in a certain way that's not only like jovial but at the same time serious so you're going to have those funny moments you're going to have those serious moments in any rpg but the way that they've broken it down based off of the characters motivations and who they are and where they come from all just really ties in to an incredible experience overall and when you think about it it's like one person did this essentially one person so over the course of almost like a decade or or a little bit less than that six seven years or something like that the fact this dude matthias did this i think that this game gets extra kudos and bonus points but it stands on its own two feet even if it was made by more people it still is one of the best and it's one of those games if you go and you look for reviews or you go and you look at what people have said about the combat the characters and the story and the replay value so many people shower praise on this game and what it does and rightfully so it has earned every bit of the number 17 spot on my list. Number 16, Near Automata, the end of Yora edition. This is easily one of the best ports that I've seen from a major company, Square Enix, especially a big RPG on the system. It's incredibly well done from how it runs for the most part, some hiccups in some places, but for the most part, incredibly well done. The look of the game, which is retained even on the Switch, but I think that the best thing is that the style of Platinum Games and their unique blend of how they create an action RPG game is so intact and so visceral here. You can feel it at every single beat when you're upgrading, when you're leveling, when you're going through levels, when you're doing your combos. Everything here just slices and feels good to play through. You have Tubi, great character. You have fantastic style. It just oozes with it. And Nier is one of those games that you have to replay in order to get everything, in order to understand completely what has happened in the story. You have to play through everything, but it's a good thing. The game lends to that, and I think that's what makes the game so good because you want to get back into that combat. You want to get back into what the game does incredibly well, which is what Platinum is known for. Everything was memorable with this game. The music isn't necessarily my favorite, although I know that people love the music, but there's some absolute bangers in this that I really truly enjoyed as I played through the game multiple times here. So Near Automata easily makes it to number 16 on my list. Number 15, Sea of Stars. And yes, the Chrono Trigger comparison so much beforehand, not quite as good and obviously can't be that game. But Sea of Stars is one of the close ones that we've had. I love the combat system. It's simplistic, but at the same time adds some depth. I think that the writing, once again, the indie developers do a phenomenal job of adding in just the right amount of comedy, just the right amount of seriousness, of something that is pretty crazy overall. I think that it's very perplexing, and the amount of different endings that you can get in this game are wild, and how you actually unlock those endings are even wilder. But make no mistake, this is a really cool action 
action command battle system that doesn't just let you just sit back and press the a button or just sit back and press the button to attack and do things you've got to be on your toes you've got to be ready to defend you've got to be ready to attack kind of like super mario rpg it is great in that sense and the style the art the music everything just gels while they're not a japanese studio they created an incredible japanese rpg the style of it the essence of it and that's exactly why i see a stars is number 15 on the list number 14 dragon quest 11 s echoes of an elusive age definitive edition and this game just like other games and i'm pretty sure they'll be hotly contested and debated in the comment section could have easily been a top three top five ish type of game for many people it's polished beyond belief on the nintendo switch we can start out at the visuals right the visuals look really good they did a great job adapting unreal engine 4 for the nintendo switch at a time where it was tough for developers they had to wait on the updates to unreal engine 4 to get it going and that's the reason why the switch version despite being the first version announced it was two years after the playstation 4 and nintendo 3ds version but the wait was well worth it because we got all the 3ds content we got better music when it launched and we got a bunch of quality of life stuff that was added into the adventure it was a way better game than the original dragon quest 11 and that's what i love about this game now while the music quality is better and i know we're going to have disagreements with this i don't necessarily love the music itself the quality is good it's no longer the midi stuff that they put out there there's orchestrated and you can change some things around but the music to me just isn't quite there. But beside that, the fact that it can still make it up to number 14 on my list, despite me not liking the music as much, shows you how good the game is. You have the portable forge to where you can upgrade and create your different items on the go. That is a great addition. You've got really polished turn-based combat. You've got a modified tension abilities that you have from Dragon Quest VIII done really well here. You've got dual tech attacks as well that form up you've got a phenomenal cast of characters great magic really good upgrading dragon quest 11 s echoes of an elusive age definitive edition is the real deal on the nintendo switch plays great portably too as well this is a great game for portable play and that really factors in into my enjoyment of a game making sure portable play is great dragon quest is one of those games where you're going to need to do that so had to put dragon quest number 14 on the list next up on my list is monster hunter rise and while it's not the traditional japanese rpg which we're going to have another one on here i'm still going to put it in that category for the fact that it needs to be talked about more and the fact that an incredible japanese studio made the game it is an rpg that i spent more time that i've ever spent in any other monster hunter game this was able to hook me more than those well, why did it do that? Well, how about let's start with the Palamu. The fact that you can just get on this really cool looking doggo customization and zip around the battlefields, which are very impressive. RE Engine once again coming clutch. I don't even want to know how much Capcom spent to get Monster Hunter Rise running and looking the way that it does on the Nintendo Switch phenomenal expansion as well with Sunbreak, which is just so good and adds so much content to the base flair and the base of the game it's just an incredible package overall but the combat is really good the online is fantastic it uses the new npl and servers that nintendo has everything is really smooth the communication is good you have all the different stuff that you want to do in terms of teaming up and battling and so many different avenues with content content on top of content you combine that with all the different weapon classes that you have and believe it or not i was a bow and arrow person back when i was playing the game that really creates a compelling experience and i don't care what people classify it as more of an action game or anything else this is a super high quality japanese rpg and one of those titles that you think about when it came out i was thinking about it and playing it all the time whether solo or online all the different quality of life features that they did include that made me kind of shy away from monster hunter in the past they all helped out here when it comes to the community in addition to the 
in-game tools. So Monster Hunter Rise is absolutely beasted its way to its spot. Number 12, Pokemon Legends Arceus. This was tough for me to put Pokemon Legends Arceus above a lot of these other games that might be more polished in other areas, offer more content, and be overall seen as a better Japanese RPG or better RPG. But allow me to explain why Pokemon Legends Arceus is so good. We've all talked about the Pokemon Company needing to evolve, the Pokemon Company needing to make something more compelling single player, the Pokemon Company needing to do all of these adjustments. Pokemon Legends Arceus comes the closest to nailing the dream Pokemon game that I've been wanting for quite some time, where there is a focus on the single player component where they do focus on some of the lore and the backstory even more where they have some compelling really eerie weird type of things happening that is pokemon legends arceus the fact that you're building that first pokedex and they've hybrided the game up right not only have they changed up the mechanics when it comes to the speed style the strong style that your pokemon can do you can do multiple attacks at a time you can store up your power and even do a stronger attack but then you also have the action element and component as well with the boss battles in the game and you being able to move around freely as a Pokemon trainer and then fight the bosses one-on-one, -on -one, which is wild that that was even a thing, but it's in there. You're out there throwing stuff and dodging from the bosses. But then even after that, if you look at how you capture the Pokemon in this game, like where you can sneak around, use the environment, throw the Pokeball and catch them if they're unsuspecting, get that nice little HD rumble when you get that perfect shot on a Pokemon, that is an evolution of the Pokemon series. That is something that I was so hyped and excited to play. And the high points when it comes to what it does well, the traversal, being able to have the different Pokemon that transform depending on what type of traversal you're doing instantly right there with the press of a button, all of that and the high points really outweigh some of the low points, like the graphics at times and some of the detail at times. So that's the reason why I have Pokemon Legends Arceus so high. It was such a fresh, innovative, new experience that got me excited for the future of Pokemon when it comes to them splitting this off and probably having two separate types, the typical Pokemon games and then this game which would be the single player focused Pokemon, which I think we're gonna get a huge Pokemon Legends 2 or follow up on the next system. And it's going to be incredible. Next up at number 11 is Octopath Traveler 2. And I said, we're gonna come back to Octopath and HD 2D. And here we are once again, Octopath Traveler 2 takes the original base game that barely squeaked into my top 25. Every single aspect is better and they've made it even crazier, even more dark and sinister with some of the stories, some of the characters and what they go through. It's tough in the original game, but this game really strokes an emotional chord that the previous game didn't do. And I honestly think this is some of Square Enix's best work ever the combat in the game is so refined and so fun to play it's addictive to be blasting people away breaking them down and blasting them with magic and blasting them with your abilities they've completely revamped the upgrading system they've completely revamped the class-based system to where you can have more freedom and different options for your characters and more abilities and ways to get them the secrets the length the story, the music, the graphics have been greatly improved. There is a huge jump. Yes, still HD 2D, but a huge jump in the fidelity and the quality of the game over the original in those number of years. So to me, Octopath Traveler 2, once again, might be one of Square Enix's best games ever when it comes down to it, and easily one of the top JRPGs on the Nintendo Switch. Number 10, Persona 4 Golden. And this game makes the list over a lot of classic games because Atlas never really re-released it a lot. Now there's awesome classic games that can be littered all over the list, but I'll have a separate thing for that. But in terms of what I personally like and my top 25 RPGs on the system, Persona 4 Golden is so good, it feels like a fresh 
new game on the platform because we weren't bombarded with re-releases over and over. They took the core of that game on the Vita. They obviously ported it over to the systems with great results. It's easily one of the best. The story, the characters, the combat, the music is literally all A, 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 like A tier, S tier, and many things. A tier, S tier, and so many different things. Easily my favorite Vita game from back in the day, but just playing it and having the ability to play it on the go, then also on the TV. And it's even better somehow than I remembered all of those years ago when I played it. I love what they've done with the story. Obviously, you have the social links, you have all the cool combat options, the personas it's incredibly well done so much better in my opinion than persona 3 and once again they didn't constantly re-release the game over and over so it felt like an incredibly fresh experience on the nintendo switch so for that reason it's gonna make it into my top 10 of best Nintendo Switch JRPGs. Coming in at number nine is Fire Emblem Engage. This game is incredible when it comes to the core essence of what makes a Fire Emblem combat system great. Fire Emblem Engage is that. It's got some really cool gimmicks added in with the different characters from Fire Emblem's past that you can use the different bond rings, really cool effects and different abilities and cool transformations that you can get and all sorts of stats and buffs Buffs and subtractions and skills. I love that stuff about this game, but I think that what really sets it apart is the UI, it's the quality of life, it's the fonts, it's the graphics, it's everything they kind of put overall to the core experience to make Fire Emblem even more fun than ever to play. And yes, there's some downsides when it comes to the story and some of the certain aspects and some of the writing, but overall, it still delivers a competent story that for major Fire Emblem fans, you're gonna be blown away by. There's some really cool revelations in that game. And I think that the difficulty that it does have and the combats and the maps and the different online options for this game were really really well done. It's not everyone's favorite when it comes to Fire Emblem fans, but you cannot deny that the combat, the graphics, the gameplay, the map layout, the sound effects, the features, it's some of the best, if not the best, in Fire Emblem history. And Fire Emblem has a rich history of incredible playing strategy RPGs, one of the best in the business. So for all of that, that's the reason why Fire Emblem Engage makes it to number nine on my list. Number eight, Shin Megami Tensei 5. And goodness gracious, this game is phenomenal. It has the style, the grit. I've never been more angry playing video games than this game right here. This game will take every bit that you had if you're in a tough boss battle and it will ring you out. It will sit there and tell you, you think that you're good at the game? Well, your strategy was not sound here. Now your whole team is wiped out. Now, if you're into crazy stuff like that, like I am, then Shin Megami Tensei 5 is for you. Luckily for everyone else, there's easy modes, there's other ways to where it's not going to be as punishing, but it doesn't matter. You know why? Because the core game is so good. I loved what they've done with the graphics in the game. Using Unreal Engine 4 was incredible for the character models, for how everything animated. It looks so good. Nahobino has never, SMT, has never looked better. Now, there are some frame rate issues in certain places, but it's a turn-based RPG, and in that turn-based RPG, RPG, you will be fusing, you will be making new demons, you'll be doing crazy different magic combinations and combos, and it's one of the games that I really wanted to get everything. I 100% of this game, getting all the demons, getting all the different endings, or at least the big secret ending, getting everything that I could, because it's that good. And when you take the time to do the side quests and see the extra story parts, it really opens your eyes up to how incredible and what they've put together with this game. Now, maybe not quite as good as SMT4 when it comes to story and progression that way, but when it comes to the combat, when it comes to the abilities, magic, fusion, even the music, that stuff is all top notch at the top of the Mega 10 gameplay. And that's the reason why SMT5 is number eight on my list. Number seven, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 plus Torna the Golden Country. Torna, in addition to Xenoblade Chronicles 2, is that good. Now, Xenoblade 2 
a little rough around the edges when I first played it, but it's still an emotional, impactful experience that I still talk about. People still talk about to this day. If you look at the combat system, obviously there was the gotcha blades and stuff like that, rare blades. Not the best implementation, but actually in practice, it's fun. It's really cool to use different blades, check out their skill trees, which also can be incredibly annoying. But once you do them, it's a really good combat system it really gels and puts things together so that's xenoblade 2 but when you get into torna it takes already a great combat system it cuts off a lot of the fat around it and then says okay have fun and they added new really cool abilities the vanguard system being able to switch back and forth that gets you a more visceral feeling and an act like hey you're actually a team working together in order to take down an enemy instead of just one blade kind of sitting back and then your driver doing all the work the fact that you can switch back and forth and gives you different benefits when you do in terms of status effects is something that's incredibly well done with the battle system they really thought that out the main villain Malos might be the best main villain ever when it comes to Japanese RPGs. He's definitely up there. If we did a top 25 villain list, Malos would have to make the list because he is incredible. And it's so good to see the origin story of like Pyra and Mithra and what happened and Adam and everything there. It just works so well. Graphics are great for the most part. The music is phenomenal as well. Once again, another incredible soundtrack from a monolith soft game. So Xenoblade Chronicles 2 plus Torna, the Golden Country could have been higher. I could talk about this game forever. Number six, Triangle Strategy. And I kind of tussled with this one because Triangle Strategy does so many things right. I think that overall, when it comes to the story, it can fight toe-to-toe -to -toe with any game on this list with the exception of a few games. It can fight toe-to-toe -to -toe with most of the games. Triangle Strategy is a beautifully crafted HD 2D game. A bit talky at times, which people did not necessarily love that. A lot of talking, but if you take the time to truly understand the story, the mechanics, what they try to do building the world, the world building, the characters, is incredibly well done one of the best incredibly well done with the world building there's so many tools and different things for you to read and understand it really pulls you into the adventure and of the like wartime politics and conflict that you absolutely kind of already see or have seen happen in the past when it comes to resources when it comes to land when it comes to what nations will do the depths that they will go to in order to get what they want Triangle Strategy pulls all that into a fantastic game overall. Now, the combat system isn't necessarily the best when it comes to these games on this list, but it's still really good. The Kudo system is fun. It's kind of like bite-sized action for the most part. Some bigger maps with bite-sized action, getting in there, doing really cool backstabs and team-up attacks in order to earn more points, earn more rewards, play better, get better rewards. So I love that about it. It has the encampment, which is one of the greatest quality of life features ever. Just being able to access all the different things that you can in there, it's such a big help if you need to grind before a tough mission on the harder difficulty or on the new game plus, or if you just need to just have it there in order to unlock different things, upgrade your characters. But the biggest thing is the scales of conviction and how that plays in and how you have to talk to your teammates, talk to people, gather evidence, go and explore. It's all very well done and just creates a cohesive strategy arc RPG experience that to me is very hard to beat. Next up is Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. This is a phenomenal experience from start to finish. What they did to take it from a game that already was incredible, but they really upped it with the quality of life features when it comes to the navigation, when it comes to the side quests, how you track different things, what you do in the game, small little tweaks here and there, and even having a button mapping option on the Nintendo Switch to switch arts over to the shoulder buttons just creates a much better gameplay experience, but the story is the start of what makes Xenoblade incredible. It's the start of the legend, and that's what is the base of what makes this game so good. The Monado, having that 
type of sword play into the story and the focus, but then also the ability of the character seeing the future and tying that to the cutscenes, tying that to the gameplay. It's synergetic. It's really good and well done. The combat still to this day is very innovative and fun to play through. A nice hybrid of MMO style in addition to kind of some turn-based things, action RPG stuff. It just really blends it all together and it's really well done. I don't want to spoil things because obviously the story, maybe people who haven't played it yet, I know it's older at this point, but what they've done with the story is legendary. To me, there's not much more that I can say and heap praise on this game, but what they've done here is truly incredible. Number four, Fire Emblem Three Houses. So Fire Emblem Three Houses is one of those games that I have the most intense, I wouldn't even say love-hate relationship, but its peaks or its highs are very similar to Pokemon Legends to where when it's good, it's like head and shoulder above so many other games out there. There are some lows here and there, but some of the writing and some of the story set pieces. But if you get past that and if you play the game in terms of how they kind of wanted things to be set up when it comes to the different routes and picking your route and seeing what happens and making your decisions and doing your upgrades and talking to everyone and recruiting the team members it creates a euphoria that I have not experienced in a strategy RPG from an emotional story level since Fire Emblem Awakening. The music is so good in this game that it really just fits the tone and what you're doing and what you're playing. It feels like every track was custom made, finely tuned to the degree to make sure that it fit everywhere that you are, which is not always a thing in all Japanese RPGs or just all games in general. Sometimes there's some really big mismatches of what you're hearing and how it sounds and what's going on. And Fire Emblem says, okay, look at this cool mix. Look at this cool mix. Look at this cool variation of the music look at that look at this over and over and it's two distinct parts and having that academy era plus the wartime and what happens there was also a nice twist and something that i didn't expect and i still think about what happened there so you combine that with some of the cool things that they added in as well with the combat they have a calendar system which i'm not the biggest fan of but i think that the added difficulty if you're playing on hard and how you have to strategize and make the most of your units and your levels it reminds me of like Path of Radiance and some of the old school Fire Emblem games to where you can't grind over and over. It created a sense of urgency and a sense of realism put into that spot if you're there and you got to make sure that you make the right decisions. You got to make sure that you do the right thing or you're going to lose somebody. Hard classic, that's the way to go, at least in terms of what I did. So Fire Emblem Three Houses absolutely earns the number four spot on the list. We're in the top three and we're with Persona 5 Royal. And just like Persona 4, it takes everything that you love about the Mega 10, everything that you love about Persona and ups it and ups it and ups it. I love the demon fusion in this game. I even love more the music in this game. Structure in terms of how things play out and the life sim stuff, I think it's a little bit of a hit and miss. There's times where it's really cool, gives you time to kind of breathe and calm down and kind of check out the scenery and do different things. And I like that in my Japanese RPGs. And Persona 5 Royal does that incredibly well. For Mementos, in terms of how they fix that, that was a huge, huge, huge update, which I really, really enjoyed. So I like the fact that they did that. And I've talked about Persona 5 Royal so much, almost like all the time. There's not much more that I can say outside of it is that Japanese RPG. It is one of the best. It is a game that really takes everything that you love about the genre and kind of puts it all together, but then adds its own style and flair on top of it. Persona 5 Royal is that good, and that's why it's easily one of the top 25 best Nintendo Switch JRPGs. Number two is Astral Chain, and the reason why I have this game on here, despite being more heavy on the action side than RPG, I still see it at its core root in terms of what it does as an RPG. And while this might not be a traditional JRPG in the way that we see it, I have to put it on this list because there's so many things that actually qualify it as that. If you look at the different legions that you have, they all have their own 
own skill trees. They all earn experience. You can put different abilities on them. They get levels and they do different things with those levels as you upgrade the nodes. Your character can level up with the batons and everything. So there's so many little JRPG stuff kind of sprinkled in, even with the story and the pacing and the gameplay and how they've done things with how the characters interact with each other and how you play the game. To me, it reminds me of that. And I know some people might disagree, but at the same time, we can all agree that it's an incredible game. And whatever side of the fence that you're on, to me, Astral Chain is one of those games that needs to be celebrated. It's underrated with what they've done. I see the legions as those different party members. So you can have your sword legion as one of the classes and the beast legion as another class. And you have the arms legion as another class. Heck, there's even a Jojo punch in there as well. So all of that stuff just lends into the awesomeness of the game. I personally loved the style and the substance, the music. It all ties in together. I love that art style. Nobody's really done it on the Nintendo Switch to the degree that Platinum Games did it, but it's so well done. We haven't seen it again, and I'm really hoping for an Astral Chain 2 on the next-gen Nintendo Switch. I think that would be great, but if you want a awesome Japanese-made game that has a ton of of rpg elements kind of baked in under the hood different stuff with the damage numbers and kind of what it does there and the leveling of the different legions astral chain is easily one of the best and number one xenoblade chronicles 3 plus future redeemed my definitive list of top 25 best Nintendo Switch RPGs has been updated. Now, Xenoblade 3 being at the top with Future Redeemed. And the reason why I have this game at the top, once again, Xenoblade, obviously, story. But the way that they did the story, I've never seen anything like this in gaming. It is honestly something that is very hard to pull off. Being able to pull in decades, we're talking 20 years of games not only the original trilogy but even more than that with xenosaga being able to pull it all in vortex it wrap it up and put it into by far the best playing xenoblade game overall that was a miracle in its own right and to make it coherent to where the fan base is thinking of the possibilities putting together theories putting together so many different things is what makes xenoblade chronicles 3 that top rpg to me it's what makes it incredible and so much fun to play xenoblade chronicles 3 combined with future redeemed adds in so many new elements to the xenoblade series especially future redeemed it was so fun to do the fusion combos and different things that happen but xenoblade 3 had the emotional tie with the characters the characters with the different classes that you can do a lot of the quality of life updates that they added in the huge world map what they did overall was just awesome and i think that the story of being on the run it's something that's been done before but they did it in a type of way from transitioning to being on the run to being the attacker and then going to future redeemed and finding and being the builder of everything was just incredible it's easily one of the best rpgs of all time it's an incredible experience that needs to be played to be believed but at the same time you need so many other parts with xenoblade 1 and xenoblade 2 but if you have all those parts together to me it's the best along with model of soft and their patented combat options abilities udo budos everything added into there now considering all of that that makes xenoblade chronicles 3 plus future redeem the best jrpg on the nintendo switch platform but what do you guys think? What are your favorite or best JRPGs on the Nintendo Switch? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you're someone new. And check out another video I did. Like my 10 JRPGs that are a 10 out of 10. 